So if we were standing in your physical shoes, if we understood what you just heard, we would set an intention, a singular intention, be the only thing that we would put on our things to do today list. I'm going to feel as good as I can feel, as much as I can feel it, as long as I can feel it. Which means we would not be facing a lot of the reality. We wouldn't watch cable news. Because there's nothing there that resonates with who you are and what you really want. Oh, it's informative, reaches all around the world. And a lot of people feel that they need to be informed of what they do not want in order to protect themselves from it. And we acknowledge that it is helpful to know what you don't want so that you can know what you do want. But you get way, 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 way carried away with the knowing what you don't want part of the equation. So we try to simplify it for you by saying you were source energy before you came into this physical body and a part of you came into this physical body and this part of you came in. We're talking fast because we know you've heard it many, 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 <laughs> many, many times. Part of you comes in that physical body and you explore the contrast and you know what you don't want, you know what you do want and you send off rockets of desire and every time you send off a rocket of desire, that rocket of desire becomes a permanent resident of your vortex of creation. And the source within you becomes vibrationally aligned with that new leading edge desire that you have ferreted out from the contrast that you have so decidedly chosen to live when you made the decision to come into this physical body. So you've launched a rocket of desire, but you've done more than that. From your physical format, you have caused the larger part of you to expand. And the larger part of you, that inner being part of you, that part of you that was you before you were you in your physical body, that still is you even though you are in this physical body, this non-physical counterpart, this inner being, this source part of you has evolved because of what you've just lived. And as that part of you has evolved because of what you've just lived, now you have a choice of whether to keep up with that evolution or not. And that's what your emotions are. The better you keep up with the expansion that you have carved out of this life experience, the better you feel. But if you launch rockets of expansion and the source within you becomes the equivalent of that expansion that you've asked for, and you stay focused upon the problem that caused you to launch the rocket, then there's a vibrational gap between you and you that you feel in the form of emotion. But that's okay because that's step one. You knew that that was essential. You knew that it was necessary to know what you don't want in order to know what you do want. And you also knew that it was logical for you to be more of a vibrational match to what is than to what is coming next because what is has a lot of your attention. Have you noticed? Because you can see what is and you can hear what is and you can smell what is and you can taste what is and you can feel what is. It's so real. It's why you want to call it reality. This is real. We say yes, but it's temporary and it's the bouncing off place from where you are. So if you sift through the real reality of what you are living and you look for the best parts of it and you hold the best parts of it as your object of attention so that the vibration that you are offering chronically is about that, then your point of attraction allows you to receive more and more and more and more and more of those things that you have been asking for. So for a while, we've been telling you about step one, step two, step three. Step one is you sift through contrast and you ask. And step two is, since you've launched that rocket of desire, source has become the equivalent of it. In other words, when you ask, it happens immediately, what you ask for. But step three is, you have to find a way of not just for a moment, not just for a flash, not just in an odd moment of influence by someone else, but you have to find steady, chronic, resonance with what you're asking for. In other words, you can't want more money and feel resonance with lack of money and get more money. You got to feel resonance with more money. And our physical friends say, well, thanks a lot. Give me some money and I'll resonate. <laughs> we say, we know you want the reality first and the resonance later, but that's not the way it works. And often you say, well, I don't know for sure that that's true, Abraham, because I don't think I was being that deliberate about a lot of things in my life. And yet, well-being pretty much surrounds me on lots of subjects. 
And we say that is because the well-being is the dominant part of that which you are about. It's natural for well-being to follow you. You had a lot of well-being resonance going before you even made your entrance into this physical body. That carries you, it does. But when you become deliberate about your vibration, when you deliberately offer your thoughts because you care about that resonance, now you're really cooking. Now you are a deliberate creator. Now you have so much control about what happens around you. And now, and only now, does life begin to really be pleasurable for you? Because it takes all of the mystery out of it. It takes all of the chance and luck stuff away. It makes you understand that you can find a position after you've sorted through life and you can deliberately hold to that vibrational position and law of attraction will support that position with manifestational, actualized, see it, hear it, smell it, taste it, touch it, evidence. So we like it that you want to be the deliberate creator of your experience because whether you know it or not, you are the creator of your experience. And a lot of people are doing a lot of that creation by default. They're just offering vibrations all over the place and law of attraction is responding to it and they like some of it and they don't like some of it. But the point is they talk about all of it. So as you're talking about wanted, that's good. But as you're talking about not wanted, not so good because all of it practices a vibration. And sometimes without even meaning to, you practice a vibration that causes that step three part, that allowing part not to happen. Oh, you want it. You want it so much. You want it so much and source has delivered it so fully, but you're not seeing it. You're not realizing it. It's not evidential to you yet because you're vibrationally off signal. Esther and those back at the office in San Antonio had a really wonderful experience in the last couple of months because there's a beautiful water feature there. It's man-made. The well pumps the water up to the headwaters and it flows down a beautiful stream with some falls and trickles into a big pond down at the bottom. And there's a filter that filters it and keeps the water clear and keeps the fish in the pond happy. But it wasn't filtering and the pond was not clear and the fish weren't happy. Something was wrong. And so the pool people came out and they just assumed that there was something wrong with the filter so they put a bigger, stronger one in. But it just worked harder and harder and the pond was still not clearing. The pressure was building in this tank way more than it should have been. Esther went into the pump house and didn't want to stay because it felt to her that that pump was about to blow up and she didn't want to be in there with it when it did. She could just feel the strain in its efforting to get the job done, but there was something that was keeping it from doing its job. So then it was discovered that the pond pulls water from the bottom comes through pipes into the filter filter was calling it in filter was filtering it and trying to put it back into the pond through some other pipes but those pipes were completely clogged caliche had built up in them very hard texas soil it becomes almost concrete like and so several men for several days with several different tools try to clear out those pipes chisel away put the plumber's snake in them it was obvious that that was not going to happen and the pipes had enough twists and turns that it was reported to esther we are not going to make this happen this way and so the idea seemed obvious well we're going to need some more pipes putting the water back into the pond and so they laid them on top of the ground no point in burying them until you know your theory is correct right so they put the pipes on top of the ground and now ah the pressure tank is happy the filter oh what a sigh of relief it breathes as the water is now flowing back easily into the pond Seems very simple, doesn't it? Water out, clean it up, put it back. Step one, step two, step three. And so we are suggesting to you that you give up on 
trying to clean out your pipes because there's a lot of gunk in there <laughs> and a lot of it's been there for a long time and it's hardened it's become immovable but you could lay some new pipes you could lay new plumbing you could put new inlets you could much more easily just establish some new ideas about some new things and you'll discover on those new ideas that when you ask it is given and in your absence of clogged pipes what is given is recognized by you is revealed to you is realized by you is experienced by you very very quickly and this is our way of saying to you rather than coming to a gathering like this with things that you are aware of that are not working as well as you'd like them to with issues that you want to discuss if you will start with new things new things that you have not yet clogged your pipes about you will allow these universal laws to deliver to you results of your clear thought and you will begin to feel your true power that's the only way that we know that our human friends we love you so much can begin to know their worthiness because when you ask and it feels like it isn't given you stop feeling worthy you start trying to explain why you're asking and not getting when it looks like that one's asking and getting and that one's asking and getting and then you make up the most ridiculous explanations of why you're asking and not getting I was bad in a past life <laughs> I wasn't born to the right people I didn't follow my religion carefully enough I'm being punished by God I'm being cursed by it. and all it is as you clogged up your own pipes that's all it is you practiced thoughts and you practiced them long enough that they became chronic thoughts or chronic beliefs beliefs are just thoughts that you keep thinking vibrational patterning so when you say I want that you also say but it's not likely I want that but it won't come I want that but I've never had it I want that but I hardly know anybody that has it I want that but the government's in the way I want that but my mates in the way I want that but my kids are in the way I want that but I don't know what to do I want that but I'm lost I want that but I'm tired I want that so you just keep clogging your pipes not even knowing you're doing it because after all you're telling the truth you're facing reality but it's true but it's true Esther would say to us Abraham but it's true and we would say to her again and again we know there are a lot of things that are true and if you're using the truth of it as your criteria to give it your attention you're clogging your pipes with all kinds of truths that are preventing you from the truths that you want to live it's just a matter of what you're giving your attention to it's all about the amount of airtime that you're giving to whatever you're giving your attention to so when you want something and you talk about why you want it or how it might feel when it comes or how you believe that it could come even though it isn't here yet that's not pipe clogging that's laying new avenues for what you want to flow to you but when you explain why you think things aren't working out for you every word you speak puts a little more caliche in your pipe and we don't care where you live puts a little bit more of that obstacle in your way so we like that analogy like all analogies there is no perfect analogy but we want you to realize that you are the creator of your own reality and that you get to choose what you're giving your attention to and the more choices you make that feel good when you make them the clearer your flow and the more easy it is for you to be in the vibrational place to feel the inspiration so that what you want can begin to flow into your experience you know how it works that you ask and it is it becomes a vibrational reality first our physical friends say well that's not very exciting to me I don't want a vibrational reality I want a real reality I want one that I can experience with my physical senses and that others can observe as they look at me and we say well then what you've got to do is figure out what you're doing with your point of attraction because you put it into the vortex and the vortex has been gathering all of the cooperative components for everything that you want and is delivering it back to you.